How's it going, everyone? Wanna cover something pretty interesting coming from an interview with people over at Naked. Head of Publishing Benoit Clark and President of Naked USA Jack Reynolds spoke to GamesIndustry.biz about a very big problem in the video game industry. Now, it's up to you to really come to a conclusion on how big of a problem this is, but it's something that I've been talking about a lot on this channel. And that is way, way too many games coming out. And there's a lot of other factors married into this that also I talk a lot about on this channel because we need to when we talk about the health of the game industry. And if you look at 2023, an incredible year for gaming in terms of high quality games coming out. But if you look actually deeper into the industry, there were a lot of layoffs, there were a lot of games flopping with very high budgets, and that is something that is definitely going to be a discussion point going forward in how to handle various game releases. We'll talk more about this in depth. Now before we get into this video, I just want to ask you guys, please like this video and do leave a comment with your thoughts, it really does help out the channel a lot, and it is much appreciated. But let's start off with the interview with GamesIndustry.biz, a link to it in the description box below. Speaking with GamesIndustry.biz before the holiday break, Naked Head of Publishing Benoit Clerk acknowledges the frequency of setbacks coming alongside less than dire news for the industry and points to a specific culprit for the seeming mismatch in events. There are too many games currently on the market. We're seeing today that the results of investment made after... The world went to hell when the market was bursting and every game was making a lot of money, so there were a lot of investments being made. This is two or three years after that, so the games we're seeing now on the market were financed in the time that there are simply too many customers to be able to play them. When you look at Steam, some days there are 50 or 60 games released in one day, only so it's more difficult to get enough traction to expose a game. We're seeing releases that are without a day one, to use the old retail expression, without any exposure of a title that has been a prior properly marketed. When you talk about Steam game releases, yes, there are 50 or 60 games that come out on Steam. A lot of them are super, super low-key releases that uh, kind of are just thrown together. However, there are certainly games that come out on Steam every day that have attention, care, and a lot of thought put behind them, but they don't have any kind of marketing budget and they are totally forgotten about. I can see where that's coming from. But that number 50 or 60, uh, to the naked eye, that might seem like, whoa, that is incredibly daunting. If you look at it across the board, in terms of high quality releases, it's a lot less than that. And again, high quality is a very subjective term, so like how you assess a high quality game is going to be different than how I assess a high quality game. But continuing on, the key for publishers now is to have a strong positioning for each game being released, Clerk says. He points to Nakin's November release of Robocop Rogue City as an ideal example of what a game might have, a big mainstream brand with a product that is super high quality in order to reach that target audience. And here's where things get even more interesting. Remember, Nakin is a mid-tier publisher. They aren't an EA. They aren't a Bandai Namco where they can have a huge marketing budget or even a gigantic production budget. Noting, I'm not spending $200 million on promotion, so I need to target gamers that have a passion and expertise for off-road racing when I'm doing WRC, that have an expertise in roguelike games when I'm doing Raven's Watch, or that have an expertise in sports games when I'm doing Cricket 24. They know the sport and game mechanics very well, and I need developers in front of that who will have the same expertise and share the same passion in order for those two groups to talk to one another. You're in a different situation in the market currently when you have games that have nothing super specific to say a specific group of gamers. There is indeed pressure from the market because the standards in terms of production values, length of experience, and knowledge of our medium from customers are going up, and our medium is waiting for innovation, so we do need to invest more we did in the past like any other mid-tier publishers. Here's the issue with this. Yes, game production and uh, game costs are going sky high. That's why when we talk about games going up to $70, I'm a little bit more understanding because, guys, these games are extremely expensive to develop. I think to a fault, again, and I know I'm a broken record with this, but I go back to the late 2000s and early tw uh, 2010s, and to me, maybe it's a little bit of nostalgia speaking, but that's where I saw gaming at its absolute height. Look, I look at what Bethesda's doing in an eight-year period. They put out Fallout 4 and Starfield. In a three-year period, they put out Fallout 3 and Skyrim. Look at what BioWare is doing. Yeah, the game's production values have gone up, but they put out three Mass Effect games in the span of like five years. 
years. And in, in between that, they also had various Dragon Age games coming out. And now they're MIA for years and years. Yeah, we got a legendary trilogy, but we're, we're waiting on Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Hopefully that's out at the end of this year. And that's because game production and development has gone so, so sky high. And the thing is, it's very easy for me to say, let's go back to late 20, uh, 2000s and early 2010s, guys. When the toothpaste is out of the tube, you can't reel it back in. It's very difficult. And now we're in a position where game production costs are so high. And the issue is, yes, there are publishers that can fund games like this. EA can fund games like that. Uh, and not all of them are going to be successes, as we'll talk about in a second. Sony can fund Last of Us Part 3 with a $200 million budget, and they'll be fine. But it's not realistic to expect this level of production to be sustainable across the board. And even with an EA, they have their EA Originals label. Look at what happened with Immortals of Avaeum. And you can uh, point towards, oh, Immortals of Avaeum was released at a bad time throughout the year. That game would have never done well. It would have, even if it came out in July like it was originally intended to, maybe it would have sold a little bit more. But that game at $70, even if it does have good qualities to it, was never going to fly. And we need to scale some of these games back. Immortals of Avaeum was a game that fundamentally had a lot of cool gameplay mechanics, but it's not realistic for new IPs across the board with a crazy high budget to pop off. Forspoken didn't do well either. And publishers like a Square Enix and an EA, they can take that L of sinking a lot of money into the production of a Forspoken and an Immortals of Aveum and uh, losing money on them, but it's not realistic for this level to be sustained at a longer period of time. And with Negan, they are a lesser publisher. It's not like they're an EA or a Square Enix and Lord of the Rings Golem is one title that they published and obviously, um, you know, that's a lot of issues. And speaking about it, it was noted when you take a hit like the one with Gollum, you learn quicker. And we have updated our processes and the way we organize ourselves as a publishing company with our developers to avoid going through such a story in the future. But those are small steps that have been made since the beginning as a publisher. So I don't think there's a super takeaway we've discovered through Go the Gollum experience. This is an ongoing iteration of feedback and learnings. He also continued by saying, we did not try at the beginning to get very centralized vertical process with the headquarters deciding everything. We know in our industry that the studios are the authors just like for novels or comic books. They are the creative entity and I need to respect the fact that creativity is coming from them, not from me. My goal as the publisher is to create the link from their creativity and talent and making the link between that and the market to be sure that their creativity will meet the, with the widest uh, audience possible. That's what my job is about. There's a lot more interesting information that's available in the interview, and I would highly recommend you to read it because it's a lot, it's really fascinating to uh, hear it from the lens of a mid-tier a publisher rather than an EA or a PlayStation. But again, the idea of there being too many games, that's a problem to an extent. And you look at February and I've talked about it. It's just like, I feel like games like Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden, Skull and Bones, maybe you could make the argument that those games would have flopped either way at any time. And we don't know if they're going to flop. I really hope Banishers doesn't flop because that game looks really cool. Don't Nod is an incredibly talented studio. And uh, that game looks really good. And it looks like the biggest budget title Don't Nod has ever put out. But they moved away from that game coming out in November to February, and the reasoning they gave was there were too many games coming out in October and November. Now you look at the calendar in February, and I would make an argument that the calendar is even harder. If you look at the releases in end of January, February, and March, are people going to drop 60 bucks for Banisher's Ghost of New Eden? I don't know. Are people going to drop 70 bucks for Skull and Bones? I find it to be highly, highly, highly unlikely that those two games are going to do very well. However, I do also see a game, especially like Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, if it does well, it'll It'll be a game that six months down the line, a lot of people pick up on sale, etc., etc., and, uh, you know, they'll get it discounted. But the rising costs of games in terms of the consumer's wallet, uh, that's going to make them a little bit more picky and choosy with the games they pick up. $70 versus $60 is a real thing. Banishers is a $60 game. I believe it was initially a $70 game, but they may have reduced it or something may have happened with that. Uh, but I'm worried about that game, and I'm worried about Skull and Bones in terms of uh, too many games coming out. Helldivers 2 is another one that I'm just like, man, this game is coming out in the midst of so many big titles coming out that it'll be interesting to see how they are affected but it's not only the idea of too many games it's also that these games their production costs 
have gone sky high and sure some of them are smaller scale projects and it's easy for me to say let's go back to late 2000s early 2010s I know that's not realistic and I've seen Sean Layden uh, constantly speak about this on social media on X uh, at some point the rubber's gonna meet the road with these production costs and we gotta do something about it or you know you're gonna have a lot of Forspokens and Immortals of Vams yeah your Elden Rings your Hogwarts Legacies your Spider-Mans they're gonna do very well but there's gonna be titles like Forspoken and Immortals of Vam that have these colossal budgets attached to them and they don't see a return on investment. I really do feel like that's one of the reasons why Sony has gone the route of delayed releasing their games on uh, PC because their games are so expensive to develop for, why not in two to three years make an extra return on that investment so you can increase the profit margins on these games? I think they should do that regardless, but I think that definitely it is incentivized by the fact that these games are so expensive. It's a marriage of too many games and also these games are super, super expensive and I don't think, would anybody agree with the fact that yes, the games visually look better and I do like quality visuals, don't get me wrong, I probably like good visuals more than a lot of other people because I see a lot of people and hear a lot of people downplaying the importance of good visuals and these large worlds, the big scale open worlds and production values, some games turn out really well and then sometimes I think like, bro, we're waiting like eight years for some of these games coming out. How are they gonna sell enough copies to make a return on the investment? Uh, whereas, you know, late 2000s, early 2010s, we're talking about getting the Uncharted trilogy, getting Last of Us Part 1, um, you know, getting the Mass Effect trilogy, getting Dragon Age games in the middle of that as well. And maybe that's just me looking at it from a simplified lens and where we're going is the right direction, but I don't know. It's just a little bit concerning to me. And there's so many players involved now as well. Back then, a lot of the developers were putting out games super, super consistently every two years or whatever. Uh, now you've got so many players in the game and so many games are coming out from different developers and different publishers. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Certainly sound off there. If you disagree with me on any area, definitely would be interested to hear your guys' takes as well. But I do think this is an issue. And again, you look at 2023 as great of a year as it was. So many layoffs, so many studio closures. Mimimi Games is another one that a lot of people just don't talk about but there that's another great studio that recently has shut down but i'm a broken raptor let me know your thoughts down below thank you for watching and goodbye hey guys we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed do us a favor and hit the bell icon this way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video that's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day and with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.